Hello and welcome to Political Dharma with Alan Mandel. Today's midweek episode is on the topic of politics, spirituality, and this election. I'm going to cover those topics in reverse order, starting with this election and then moving into spirituality and then finally politics and uh, with a few remarks at the end about future episodes of Political Dharma. Of course, um, this election, I mean the presidential election that I've been covering all year, but not only the presidential election, I also mean the other elections which are being what colored by the combating over the presidential election, the division between Republicans and Democrats, between Harris supporters and Trump supporters, the MAGA movement, and those who see themselves as countering the MAGA movement. That is not only part of the presidential election race, it's also spilled over into congressional races and state races and other races as well. And I think it would not be an exaggeration to say that say that this uh, campaign season has been more than most characterized by a lot of fear and anger. Fear of what could happen as a result of the election, fear of other people and what they may do, and anger towards others who are either on the other side of the divide or who seem not to be taking the right position or the right side in the contest. So a lot of fear and anger. And some of my viewers or previous episodes of Political Dharma have written comments that are, um, they, they touch my heart about problems they have within their family, divisions regarding this election and all these related issues. And then those who are fearful of what might happen and how they should vote and what their responsibility is. So there's a lot of, um, this is especially uh, emotionally upsetting election. And I think that's not uh, for reasons that are trivial. I think there are reasons to fear what may come out of it and uh, plenty of reasons to be angry with the behavior of other people. But what I want to say about those is that even though a lot of folks would say we need to overcome these kinds of fears of each other and anger at each other and bring in more civility, to our discussions and find ways to reason together. I think it goes beyond that. And this is part of the way I see it intersection, intersecting with spirituality in that spiritual traditions have also dealt with fear and anger. I think the ones that I would adhere to mostly recommend not simply uh, trying to suppress anger in order to uh, treat everybody the same but would deal with uh, the kind of divisiveness of fear and anger with, number one, specifically countering fear with courage, meaning not overcoming or, or banishing fear from yourself, but acting out of truth and righteousness despite our fears. And by truth, I don't mean some particular religious truth. I mean seeking truth the reality of our situation in life and at this particular moment, um, seeking that truth as best you're able and then acting on your perception of the truth, always keeping an open mind to learning more, but being willing to act and speak the truth, to say what you believe is true and to defend it and then to listen to the other side in case you're wrong about things and also to... Um, be willing to act on it, to vote in a way that reflects your beliefs and the truth that you see and to take other actions in regard to that as well. And then the counter to the anger, which is stoked up, I think, sometimes deliberately, often deliberately, same as fear, to divide people. I think this division between people is dangerous for society and dangerous for particular human beings in particular. And the way to overcome that is through what is often in spiritual traditions called love. English doesn't have a very flexible vocabulary of how we feel about other people. But here, I don't mean love in a sentimental sense in which you can somehow generate 
positive feelings towards every human being that you're aware of because people can have some very annoying and unsavory traits. But what it really means is a regard for the well-being of other people. And the well-being of other people includes not just their uh, their ability to access the material resources they need to lead a decent life and support a family, but also their ability to become the best expression of themselves and to in, themselves find truth and find the desire to seek truth and overcome their fears and overcome their anger with this type of love. So here's the intersection with spirituality and politics, I think, can be useful in addressing these concerns about divisiveness and fear and anger is understanding how um, courage can be thought of as a life project larger than politics, but also including politics to seek out understanding of the role of human beings in the world and our interconnectedness and whatever the truth of our situation is, and then acting on that in a way that brings healing and ends divisiveness and regards the well-being of all, in particular those who are suffering and hurting, because the weakest links in the human net will be those who are what currently being harmed by the way we uh, behave and treat other people. Uh, so here I've moved from this election into a discussion of spirituality, and I do want to say that I know the word spirituality is ambiguous. It means different things for different people. And a lot of you viewing this may have very different views what spirituality means to some. It's just woo-woo things, you know, um, fantasies and delusions about who knows what, life after death or the presence of a uh, god or gods of some kind. Um, our rigid morality and rigid doctrinal positions in which you think uh, you have to believe a certain thing about history or about the world or human nature rather than exploring for yourself the truth of these things. You just adopt something that some religious authority gives you. That's not the kind of stuff I would want to say is spirituality. I think spirituality has more to do with this quest for understanding who we are in this, uh, not uh, in the universe, of course, because... <laughs> We're, we exist within this much larger net, but it, you know that's pretty tall order to understand all that. But to have a sense of what the meaning of our lives is in relation to other human beings, in relation to our existence here at this particular time and moment in history. So who are you? Who, who am I fully? That's what it means, coming to know myself more fully and coming to express myself in the world in a way that advances whatever this mysterious project is of the, the the creation of human beings, and I don't mean necessarily the creation at a particular moment in time by a god who, you know, formed man out of the dust of the earth and then split him using his river, anything like that. I mean, the fact that human beings here are here, they weren't here in the remote past, they're here now, and their society seems, our societies seem to be moving towards something, and we have all these human desires for uh, some kind of world that's better. We, we feel like we're moving towards something, all that stuff. How do we understand that? How do we relate to other people? How do we see our roles vis-a-vis -vis other people in the societies we live in? I think all that has a spiritual dimension, especially when you add in these aspects of trying to um, overcome fear and overcome division with love and courage. Of course, the title of the show is Political Dharma, and so that should already convey to you the word Dharma, that I'm trying to bring a spiritual dimension into this. And I haven't talked about that a lot this year, been focusing almost entirely on the presidential election and the uh, alternative independent and minor party candidates who are contesting for the election and their challenges to the two-party system. I've been talking mostly about that, but this has been something in my life, what has brought me to politics is my own spiritual quest, if you want to call it that. I was not raised in a political family, and I, as an adolescent and teenager, did not have any special interest in politics. When I first got, uh, when I first began to notice the importance of government and politics is when I was coming of age as an adult and realized that I was susceptible to the draft. This was the time of the Vietnam War, 
and I just didn't, uh, I had to contend with the fact that they sent me this notice in the mail that under criminal penalties I had to show up for a physical and that I could be required to serve in the armed forces and even participate in a war that I very much disagreed with. So that sense that government has the power to do this and to define who you're going to be and what you're going to do uh, kind of shook me up and gave me the sense that, you know, maybe I need to take these things more seriously. But then when the threat of the draft passed me by and the war started to wind down, I turned to my previous interest, which had long been filmmaking and comedy. Uh, I, I expected to be a film comedian and then move later in life into being a director of more meaningful type dramas. Uh, but that was my ambition. But I found that was not um, that satisfying to me enough. I felt like my development as a human being was in some way lacking that I couldn't quite define. And it took a number of uh, experiences and encounters to lead me away from my initial re rejection of my home religion of Roman Catholicism that I'd been raised in and uh, to turn back towards trying to understand this spiritual side of life. And a lot of it was through the influence of Eastern religions on American culture in the 60s and 70s that I participated in. And of course, the word Dharma is associated with Hindu religions and Buddhism. And so uh, I picked it in for the show because it conveyed certain things I want to convey, but not in language that was too familiar to the audience uh, as if I had chosen a Christian. I couldn't find a good Christian term or a good Western English term that quite expressed what I wanted without it having all kind of baggage of other expectations of what it meant that I would have to continually uh, try to explain. Whereas Dharma is something that, that some people have some concept of what it means and can kind of try to um, fish out what I'm, how I'm using it. And other people I have no idea, so it, it can mean whatever I want it to mean in that respect. But uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at here is um, my spiritual quest then led me back to politics in a lot of ways. Number one, because as I became, um, I, I, I returned to my home religion of Christianity at one point in time because I wanted some kind of institutional and traditional vehicle for growing. I realized I was not going to become enlightened <laughs> overnight. And uh, so uh, through a variety of encounters, it, it ended up that I was led back into this. It was mostly through meditation, actually, because I had picked up the practice of meditation and then someone made me recognize that there was a meditation tradition within Roman Catholicism, and I got interested in that. And little at a time, I started to re-imbibe some Christian things that I found valuable, even in my youth. These sayings and example of Jesus, the stories of Jesus, had a lot of meaning for me, continued to have meaning for me, and still have meaning for me. Um, I, don't, I no longer call myself a Christian. I'm getting a little off track here talking about myself, but... There's a point to this, I hope. <laughs> I think there is. Um, I, I no longer call myself a Christian, even though my life is very much influenced by the example and words of Jesus, at least as I understand them. Uh, but I do not adhere to a particular Christian church, nor do I adhere to the typical doctrinal positions. Christian has come to be defined as someone who holds a particular set of beliefs about the person of Jesus Christ and about salvation and all that. Those are not an important part of my uh, mindset. Really, I see Jesus now as very much a spiritual but political figure, and that's a topic for a whole nother show. But I do see him as trying to work toward a type of community that was based on spiritual principles. And he had the expectation God was in, going to intervene in history to create this, but at the same time, he was trying to shape a community that exhibited these traits and saw himself as a harbinger of this and perhaps even a leader of a re restored world under a different type of political system governed by God and God's principles. Anyway, long, long way of saying, I, I got involved in Christianity and that led me to the tr tradition of Christian social justice. And this kind of intersected with what was happening in the 1980s with U.S. military involvement in Latin America and the escalation of the Cold War and buildup of nuclear armed forces again under Ronald Reagan. Uh, all that stuff concerned me, given my previous experience, our, our views on war that came out of the era of Vietnam. 
And that concerned me, and I was going to a Catholic college and realized there was a lot of um, Christian traditions that had to do with social justice and anti-militarism and uh, that. So started to move back in a political direction. And my window into this really was Martin Luther King Jr. as a Christian who exhibited um, a spiritual a spiritual dimension to his tactics and his understanding of what he was trying to achieve politically. I moved toward understanding him, studied his thinking, studied his actions, and then through that, I got interested in Mohandas Gandhi. I had been aware of Gandhi previously, but it was only after knowing how much of an influence he had on Martin Luther King Jr. that I got more interested in learning more, and today I'm wearing my... If you can make out in that design Gandhi's face, my Gandhi t-shirt, because he's been a, a very important influence on my thinking about these things. And in fact, I have this picture. It's the same as the picture on my shirt. A little clearer. I've been meaning to put it on the wall behind me over here somewhere, but I haven't yet found the right frame for it in any event. Uh, and so my interest in Gandhi also led me to other Christian thinkers like Leo Tolstoy and his uh, giving up of his wealth and privilege in order to um, create a kind of communal situation with the people who worked on his land and, uh, you know, previous people who influenced Gandhi and some of them having Christian beliefs and a lot of it coming from his own Hindu tradition. So the, the, the broad outlook of both King and Gandhi and accepting the important elements of many religious traditions that corresponded with their own conception of spirituality. All this shaped my thinking on these things. And my, um, my life led me in directions where constantly my spirituality brought me back to political things, and thus the genesis of this show, Political Dharma, because I see it as uh, an expression of my political activism that uh, I've tried to incorporate my spiritual side of my life if you want to call it that, I don't think you can really divide these things into the political side of my life, my political activism. Um, so where was I going with that? Spirituality, that's what I mean by it, is the sense that we have, a, uh, we have traditions that help us or try to help us to develop ourselves more fully and realize our place in the world and our interconnectedness with human beings and develop ways to fully, uh, what, what, overcome our own falling short of our own ideals and uh, um, inculcate or cultivate our, our, our ability to love more fully, to act more courageously, to see truth more clearly. Uh, all these things of inner development that intersects with how we behave outwardly and affects the society that we live within. Because politics, now this is getting to the third part, I talked about the election this day and the kind of emotional uh, turmoil that surrounds it. And then I talked about spirituality and, and a brief encapsulation of my own um, uh, sense of spirituality and where I'm coming from. And now politics to me, as it, I think it has to be defined, is people working together in a particular way. Um, we are social beings, as Aristotle said a long time ago, before the time of Jesus. We depend upon each other for our material needs. We have to act together with other human beings in order to provide what we need to grow food and to, uh, in earlier societies, hunt together and more recent societies to work together to produce things. Uh, so it's very, we're, we're social animals and we have to have a way of working together harmoniously. And so government is seen as a way to uh, enforce a particular social order, a way of us to work together. And when we act politically, we're acting out of a vision of what that social order should look like, whether it is that what we have now is close to ideal and therefore we should defend it, or our sense of reality is that it's very far from the ideal and so we need to work harder to move beyond it and improve upon it. Either way, there's the recognition that our current reality is, in some respects, has good elements to preserve and defend, but it also has areas where we need to move beyond it and improve upon it in order to fully express ourselves as spiritual beings. We have to be able to pay attention 
to the way we work together, we interact with each other in order to form a society that expresses all those spiritual things. Um, so, I, I guess I'm, because this is the second time I'm recording this, I'm not sure if I covered everything I wanted to say, but I think that was pretty well. So, bringing it around to the beginning again, uh, so if politics is about how we live together and what role government plays in either uh, defending our current reality or trying to alter it, our political activity is involved with how we intersect with government and intersect with other people within our society to move things in one direction or another, uh, defending certain elements of, in my case, American politics and culture and trying to move them in a better direction in other aspects of American politics and culture. So we all have, we're all we on the same boat. We're trying to uh, figure out where we're at as a society and move forward toward it. But the important thing I want to say here about King and Gandhi is tactics, political tactics, are as important as the goals because you cannot create a world that overcomes division, divisions and overcomes anger at each other and overcomes what uh, harming each other with tactics that harm other people and divide other people and invoke anger and fear in other people. So I think it's very important the kinds of tactics we use and that's my commitment to nonviolence which Gandhi is primarily known for but it's not a form of pacifism where you just uh, simply step back and refuse to do anything that's violent in any way but really it is a way of acting proactively even escalating tensions if it helps to demonstrate uh, areas where we're not really treating each other well and bring into it a sense that the way we treat other people in our political activism expresses the kind of world that we want to see happen. So it is renouncing forms of violence against other people, but not accepting that we will not counter their visions of uh, what we should be if it... Uh, we do not counter that with violence and force, but with our own expression of our best understanding of truth, our willingness to see them as human beings and treat them as human beings worthy of, if not respect in the way you would think of it, but worthy of consideration, worthy of having their well-being count to us. And their well-being has a lot of dimensions, not only you know, physical well-being, but also their well-being in the sense of their own ability to grow and become a better person and find more fulfillment in their life as a spiritual being. So uh, methods are important. And this is really what I wanted to do is reintroduce this theme of spirituality and politics because as you know by the title, Political Dharma, uh, that is, uh, at least you should intimate that that was an important part of what I'm doing here. In the coming year, I want to bring that aspect of it more into the forefront of the things I talk about. It won't necessarily always be a, an explicit topic when I talk, but I do want to make it more, um, I haven't talked about it enough this year, so I wanted to reintroduce that and make sure those of you who are following me have a better sense of where I'm coming from and that side of my life. Also in future shows, I think one of the things I want to try, and you may want to comment on this, is to have live broadcasts maybe once a month on uh, YouTube where I am directly addressing in real time questions or um, challenges that people pose in the chat. So just a, a heads up on what's coming up. So to sum up, those of you who are wrestling with fear and anger know that I, um, I take seriously. Oh, listen to that, it's a fire engine. So we are in an emergency situation in this country. It's a four alarm fire. We all wanna do the right thing. We have disagreements about what those right things are, but I think if we seek the truth, speak the truth as best we're able, and act in harmony with our um, sense of the best selves and uh, the common humanity of all people, I think we're on the right track. That's, uh, that's about it for today. A little vague, but just know that I am acknowledging this time we're living in is one that's particularly challenging and I want to reintroduce the topic of spirituality as a way to, in, to um, address that 
emergency situation we're in, whatever the outcome of the election, it's not going to end what we're going through this time of crisis and um, reorganization of society in one way or another. We're going to be participates, participants in it, no matter how we try to remain uninvolved, because uh, if you're uninvolved, you're allowing things to go in the direction they seem to be going. If you get involved, you want to make sure you have an idea of what you're trying to do. So my job, I think, I guess as I see it, is to clarify these things and to bring whatever perspective I can to them and also to demonstrate what I want to see people do is, which is remain open to what other people have to say and to always use tactics that are in conformance with the world I want to see come more into realization. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate those of you who have been following me and uh, getting to know some of you to some degree through your comments. And I also appreciate those of you who are disagreeing with me. Uh, I respect that. I don't have all the answers. I don't have a full vision of everything. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you've listened at least this far and glad you've taken an interest in what I had to say. Um, so please, if, if you continue to be interested, come on back, comment, and if you will, share, like, all the rest. Thanks again. Bye.